Well, hello, and welcome to class 16. 16, uh, class 16, we're going to talk about sprite animation. I know that a lot of your projects uh, are, animation can certainly help those look a lot uh, better. So we're going to dig into sprite animation today and uh, cover that and write some example code. All right, so to start out with here, um, to create animation of uh, characters or other objects, there are essentially multiple approaches. One of them is to animate by moving, uh, changing, drawing geometry. So things like animation there would be like change the diameter of a circle so it gets larger and smaller, kind of pulsates, or, or have a line uh, that moves around like a Pac-Man that opens and closes its mouth. You could do that with a kind of a, a polygon that sits in the middle of it, and the polygon gets narrower and larger, and you move that up and down with a sine wave or something like that. Um, the other type of animation is by moving, rotating, and scaling parts. That works with uh, not just drawing geometry, but it works with images. So, for example, if you had a, a character and you had the arms separate from the head, separate from the torso, you could rotate the arms around this location. You could move the torso around and scale it, make it larger or smaller. You could have the head kind of move in relation to the torso and have it bop along. Uh, whatever you want. Um, and we're not really going to cover these two methods today. We're going to focus on this third one, which is to animate by flipping through animation frames. And we're going to do that with uh, sprites today. And so that essentially works like a flip book, uh, meaning that you flip through multiple frames sequentially. In other words, you draw. And th this is an animation sequence that I just did with paint uh, real quick for this lecture. Um, so I don't really know how close this looks to actual running. I just used the paint tool and kind of painted the torso. But you will notice a couple things about this uh, that are, are worth noticing. You'll notice that the I tried to copy what this would look like with a person actually running. And I did like a 2D projection. So this arm is kind of in front here. It starts to move down, comes out away from the body, moves down along the side, goes to the back and then starts back forward again. And you'll notice that it follows a, um, a, a sequence where it pretty closely ends up to where it started. So if you look at that, the uh, that arm does follows that and ends where it started, but also the other arm, the arm on the other side that you can't see, which would be the uh, left arm in the case of that figure, it starts back there, but then it moves where you can't see it. It's behind the figure. And then starts to come forward. So notice that they've kind of changed places, but the blue one is in the back. And then it's all the way up in front uh, up here. And then it starts back down again. And then it goes to the back and it's kind of back where it started again at the beginning. And the legs are the same. Yeah, in this case, the uh, purple leg is the one in the front. This lighter blue one is the one toward the back. But you notice the purple one is back when the arm the front arm is forward, and then that kind of moves up. The knee bends, it kind of gets pulled forward and then put down, uh, hits the ground, and then they push off of that leg here, and then it's kind of back to where it started. And the same thing for the other ones. The other thing that I tried to do when I modeled this is you'll notice the point of the head, it starts out where they're off the ground here. So the head kind of goes down a little bit and then back up as they spring off of that left leg. And then uh, it'll go down a little bit again and then up when they spring off of the uh, right leg and so forth. So this is a walking sequence. And again, I haven't looked at what this looks like. I think it's probably OK. It'll look a little fuzzy. But if your art style is that, it's OK. Uh, it'll probably look pretty good. But the idea here is we're going to show this frame, the first frame, first span of time, and then the second frame, and then the third frame, and the fourth frame, and the fifth frame, and the sixth frame, and so forth. And we're just going to cycle through each of these frames one at a time. And we'll get that kind of should look like a, a running motion as your brain puts that together. So no different than if you've ever made one of those little flip books where you take uh, a stack of cards or the corner of a book and draw something and you flip through it. That's essentially what we're doing here by doing this and we're using these sprites to do that. Now, the idea is that each frame should remain on the screen for some period of time. Um, and so here we show this for some span of time and then we switch to this one for a span of time and then that one and that one, and that one, and that one, and so forth. And that'll make it look like it's actually uh, running. And actually, as you're watching this lecture video and you see my mouth moving, that's just individual frames as well. So when I move my finger across here, you're just getting individual, individual frames uh, with it moved uh, to a different location. 
And one thing you can do uh, that I've done in the past is if you want to make animation sequences uh, using your art style for your game, one of the things in the past that I've done is uh, take like a camera, could be your cell phone, could be something on your laptop. And if you want like a walking motion, film yourself walking by and then load that up in a video uh, uh, playback machine and then step through the frames of that. And maybe you skip every third or every fourth frame or whatever. But then you could put those into a paint program and then paint over the top of your uh, video uh, something like a, a stick figure, which is essentially kind of what I have here. I just did this freehand rather than over the top of some video frames. But the idea there would be that you would have a natural looking walking sequence off of the video and then you put the stick figure points over that uh, using some graphics program. Uh, and then once you have those lined up to those keyframes, then you could actually put that stick figure as a layer and draw your art underneath that for each of the keyframes. And then for going, from going from one frame to the next, you could actually use uh, tools like um, the lasso tool to, uh, or the magic wand tool or something like that to select the different parts of the body and then rotate them, move them to match up with the stick figure. And you can actually get some really good looking animations that way. And that, that also works if you want to like animate swinging a sword or crawling or jumping. You can actually record yourself doing those things, put that in, capture those frames of video, put the stick figure over that, and then put your art style under the stick figure over the stick figure and you'll have a pretty natural looking thing and you can tune it from that. Now, one thing to note is that you can make uh, changes to the animation through just the speed at which it's going. So, so in other words, if you make the frame time FT uh, lower, shorter amount of time, it'll make the, the character animated faster. So for example, the difference between running fast and running slow in the game could just be changing this FT variable. How long is each frame on the screen? If it's a shorter time, it's going to go through the animation faster. If it's a longer time, it's going to go more slowly. So for example, the difference between an animation of something doing this, if I slow that down, it's just more time between each of the frames than if I do it fast. That's less time between each of the frames. So you can actually programmatically change that to match uh, things in the game if you want to. Okay, so the question is, how do we program that? And the way that we're going to go out program that is we're going to make a list of those frames. And uh, we're going to load the surfaces for each of these frames into that list of frames. So we're going to make a frame list. We're going to do frame list.append. And the thing we're going to append to that is going to be a surface. So we'll append a surface for this frame, one for that one, 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 and so forth. And the surfaces will usually be loaded from a individual file. So in other words, this might be uh, run frame one, run frame two, run frame three, run frame four, one frame run five, one frame six. And if we did the whole sequence that we had back here, we'd have 12 total frames that get us back to where we started. So we might not want to load the last one because that might duplicate this, but I think they're, they're different. You, you'll have to play around with that to see. But the idea is, that you just make a frame for every one of those. The other option is to put all of those into one frame uh, file, like or one sprite file like this that includes all of the frames, and then programmatically pull them out uh, by clipping out this part of the picture and that part of the picture and that part of the picture, but we would still put them into the animation uh, frame list one at a time. We would just cut them out of the original one. And we're gonna look at examples of doing uh, both of those methods here. Uh, later today. All right, the next thing we would need to do is we need to set up uh, a variable that keeps track of which frame we're on. And then we want to keep track of how long each frame is on the screen. And so this frame timer here could be like an actual amount of time, like uh, a clock based frame update, or that could be a number of game loop frames. And if you set the game loop to, uh, for example, 60 hertz or 120 hertz and lock it at that, then we can just rely on that as, as counting down to when the next frame goes. So if you wanted, for example, your animation to be uh, run through the whole sequence over the course of a second, and there are uh, 12 frames, and you're running at 120 hertz, well, you could figure that you'd have each frame on uh, each frame of the animation on the uh, screen for 12 updates through the game loop. So you count to 12, 
change the frame, reset back to zero, count to 12, or the other way to think about it, start at 12, count to zero, when you get to zero, go to the next frame, reset the frame counter back to that. Um, sometimes it can be more useful though to think through by just setting the uh, wall clock time for each frame, how much time is it is each frame on the screen. Uh, so for example, you could set a tenth of a second, each frame is shown for a tenth of a second uh, with 12 frames, it'll take 1.2 uh, seconds to get through that, or you could set this to a smaller number. The only thing to be careful of is if you're doing the frame updates that way, the frame update rate, the number of frames per second you're getting from your main game uh, could make some of the frames show up a little bit less than other ones because it's an integer uh, number of updates per second and you're keeping track of this fractional thing so you might get some of the parts might not look completely smooth. There are some ways to smooth those and crossfade them as well. Uh, we're not going to get into that today. We're going to keep it simple today. All right, so let's write uh, some code. Let's start off with this walking uh, person example. And then we're also going to do an explosion. So let's start off with this walking person example. And uh, to do that example, uh, I'm going to switch over to where you can see uh, what I'm doing on the screen. And I'm just going to build this uh, program up. Uh, from scratch. So let me switch over so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so there I am on the screen. Let me launch a, a Python shell here. I'll just use idle for this. All right, so here's this Python shell, and the font size is probably a little small if you're watching this on a mobile device. So let me make the font size a little bigger, uh, which means I'm going to need to make this window a little shorter. Uh, let's knock this up to, I don't know, like 22 maybe. All right, that should be a little easier for you to see what I'm doing. And I'll put this here. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say file new file and let me put this on the screen so you can see the whole window here okay so here's our program that we're going to write and before i do anything else let's look at the actual um, files that we're going to use now here's the walking sequence uh, that i have i've got this little uh, knight uh, and he's walking uh, in this case to the right and you'll notice that i got these files from uh, a place on the internet that has uh, free um, art assets, including his animation files. Uh, let me see if that I can find that and bring that up real quick so you can see that and you can look at those yourself. But the cool thing about them is these are named uh, the direction it's walking, what it's doing, walking, and then E is east, and then the frame number. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 6, 7, and then it's back to where it started. And the guy that makes these is actually, it's really cool that he releases those uh, for free. Uh, let me see if I can bring that up here real quick and show you where it is. Okay, so here's the, the website. Let me, here, let me drag this tab over where you can see it. All right, so you should be able to see that now that it says Reiner's, uh, tile sets, and you'll notice that it's got 2D graphics, he's got some 3D stuff as well, but if you look at the stuff that's in here, if you go to 2D graphics, it's divided into categories, we've got animals, um, here let's go to 2D graphics, animals, animated, buildings, environment, humans, miscellaneous monsters, vehicles, uh, so let's just go to the humans one, and here under humans you'll notice they're in categories, there's queen, there's this Vlad uh, with a sword, Vlad with an axe, uh, Luigi who looks like a little baker. Um, here, let me zoom in on that a little bit so you can see those a little better. This full plated knight, uh, horse riding knight, a gray caveman, and there's just a bunch of these in here. And the cool thing about these is if we just pick one of these and download it, uh, like here, let's look at, uh, I don't know where the knight was that I downloaded, but let's, uh, Hey, let's go up to one of these ones towards the top here and let's do 
let's do the full plate at night. Now, if you download that file, download that file. I don't know if that's downloading out. It let me click on it, but it doesn't seem to be downloading. Uh, let me look in my downloads directory and see if it downloaded any of this. It did not. So I don't know if maybe the links are broken or what, but the, uh, before when I access that, uh, there could be something with my machine as well. Because I'm not getting an error. Uh, let me try opening that in a new tab. Uh, but anyway, uh, if that works, it'll download it and it will have all of the animation sequences for that um, that particular character. So let, me, let me try again. Okay, for some reason I had to copy that uh, link and then paste it in and it worked. So let me go ahead and open this. Okay, so back to uh, looking at what you get. Here is what's in that zip file. And you'll notice that there's these 96 uh, by 96 bitmaps. It's also 128 by 128. Uh, and battlefield, town. But let's, let's go and open one of these sub directories here. So you'll notice these are organized by attack. Here's attack east, attack north, attack northeast. But you'll notice that there are all these different sequences in here, attack south. But then after attack, there's been hit east, north, all the different directions. But he follows this uh, kind of naming convention here and all these running. There was walking, uh, tipping over in all the different directions. And there are just tons of these for all of the different um, things. So let me, here, let's go and open one of these and take a look at what it is we're talking about here. So there it is. Uh, there's what that looks like. And you'll notice he puts them on this uh, constant colored background, which can be useful. Uh, it tends to either look like grass uh, or dirt or something like that. But the nice thing is, since this is all one color, we can color key that out, which we're going to look at as well. So the, anyway, the ones of the, those that I used looked like this. We've got this uh, knight or lord or whatever it is uh, walking to the east. And we're going to make that so it walks in other directions by just using these. But we have this eight uh, frame sequence of walking happening here. And I also down, did a, a search for castle and downloaded this in forest so we can make him walk across the forest to the castle as a background. But let's go ahead and start writing the code for this. So what I'm going to do, let's go back to our blank program here. And I'm going to say, uh, give this a name. And I'm just going to call this like Sprite. Oops. Ah. Wrong window. All right, here we go. Sprite walking example. 
And we're obviously going to use Pygame. So let's import Pygame. We're probably also going to use time, so I'm going to import that. I'm probably not going to need math for this. Uh, if we were making a bigger game that had needed sine and cosine and particle effects, we'd probably import math. But I'm going to keep this just to a bare minimum. And what I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to make the uh, the uh, basic framework of our program. And I like to do that first and get it working before we dig into what we're going to do. So let's initialize Pygame, pygame.init. Let's make our display surface. So display surface equal pygame.display.setMode. And we've done this a whole bunch of times in this class so far. So you should be at least getting used to that. We'll just make an 800 by 16 uh, or 800 by 600 uh, screen. And then down here, um, I'm going to have my main loop. So I'm going to say while true. And I'm also going to, I'm going to lock this at 60 hertz just so we don't have to worry as much about the timing. Uh, of this. So I'm going to make a FPS clock equal pygame.clock or pygame.time.clock. So that's the clock. And at the top of my loop, I'm going to say FPS clock.tick. And let's just hard code it at 60 for right now. Now we could change that later and make it a higher frame rate or a lower frame rate, but I'm going to just tack, uh, fix it at 60 for right now. All right. Now, we're going to have to handle events. So I'm going to do uh, pygame.event.pump. And I'm going to get the keys. So keys equal pygame.key.get pressed. And this is something we've done a bunch of times as well. And I'm going to say if uh, keys subscript pygame.k underscore escape. So if they press the escape key, then we're going to go ahead and break out of the uh, this main loop. Now, I'm going to have the night move uh, later on, but we'll add that in uh, that other code in here uh, in just a little bit. But one of the things I am going to do is down here at the bottom, I'm going to do a uh, here. Let's do a screen or display surface dot fill to clear the screen, and I'm just going to fill it with a, a constant color. Um, let's make something kind of brown uh, down here. Uh, or maybe gray. So let's do, I don't know, like 70, 70, 70. So that'll be kind of a darkish gray color. We can change that later. Let's make it a little darker than that. Maybe we'll do 50, 50, 50. That's kind of a dark gray color. And then what we're going to do is we're eventually going to do uh, render the, the night uh, and update the night. Uh, but right now, what I'm going to do is leave that off. We're just going to get our framework working. So pygame.display.flip uh, or update. And then pygame.display.quit after we're done with the main loop. All right, so there's our main loop uh, set up. And let's just go and run that, make sure that works. And then we'll add our other stuff in. So. Uh, let me save this in the right place here. So that's going to be 1802 online lectures, bright animation examples, walking, and I'm going to save it right where a walking example.py, right where those uh, files were. All right. Uh, okay, we had a typo, pi game not defined, and this is uh, kind of why I do this piecewise. Pi game, pi game, pi game, right there. Pi game. It's hard to type with the computer up on this box where you have a better view of me. Okay, so there's our gray screen. Nothing happens, but we get a gray screen. I hit escape and it ends. All right, now we're ready to start adding the code. Uh, to render this um, character. So what I'm going to do is up here at the top, before this stuff, I'm going to make this class for that night. And I'm going to go and call it, uh, I don't know if that's a knight or like a lord or whatever. Uh, here, I'll call it lord. Well, let's just call it knight. It doesn't have armor, but we'll call it knight. And inside of here, I'm going to have my constructor. And 
And I want the night to start out at a certain x and y. So I'll pass those in. And then here's self.x equal x, self.y equal y. But now we need to add our stuff for our animation here. So I'm going to say self. Uh, we'll call this walk frames. That's going to be an empty list. But now I'm going to add to that all of those individual files. So here I'm going to do self.walkframes.append. And here we need a surface, so pygame.image.load. We'll load that uh, image up and make a surface. And now we need to remember the names of those as we're walking. Uh, it was east, so E. Zero, 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 and then the number. So here would be like zero. And I believe those were bitmaps.bmp. And I misspelled walking. All right, so like that. Uh, let me go back and check that that's what those were called. E zero, 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 so four zeros, so it's three zeros, and then the digit, and it's walking, lowercase e, dot bmp. So I think I got that right. Let's go back and check. Yep, that looks right. So now what I'm going to do to load the rest of those frames is I'm just going to paste these in one at a time. So that's this next one's going to be one. And then two. And then three. And four. And I believe the last, there were eight of these, so the last one is seven. So it's going to be five, six, seven, because it started with zero. Now, if you wanted to, you could make a for loop and do this probably in a more efficient way than what I'm doing here uh, by formatting this string and doing that. But just to show you we're loading all those frames, I'm going to do it kind of this more brute force way here. And that also allows you to use different uh, file names. But if you wanted to, you could load all these up dynamically because uh, the only part of this that's changing is that. And you can make that string by adding, having a for loop that goes uh, through from zero in range 0 up to uh, 8, which would go 0 to 7, and then combine those together at string and make a for loop that does that. But we're just going to do it to show that we're getting all of those bitmaps loaded up in there into those frames. Now, the next thing we're going to need to do is I want to pick out what the current frame uh, is set to. So I'm going to say self dot current frame. And let's do, let's do walk frame current might be a little better way to name that. And let's start it out at frame zero. And the next thing that I want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and set the, uh, in this example, I'm going to set the uh, okay, I have an issue here with mismatch parentheses, which is why that's being weird. So let me add my close parenthesis on each of these. Maybe some of you caught that. All right, so there we go. So now we're, uh, we have our current frame. And now I'm going to set my uh, walk frame, and let's call this speed or time. And here I'm going to do this by in the number of frames that, that stays on the screen. Uh, we could also make it work in the uh, actual time. You know what, let's change this around. Let's call this walk speed. And let's take that off for a second. And let's, let's actually make it time-based. Uh, we'll do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add another couple things. So I'm going to say self.direction. Uh, 
because right now notice all of these are walking to the east, but I also want to get it to walk uh, to the west too, or in other words, to the left and the right. I'm going to have this walk direction and I'm going to set that equal to R if we're going right, L if we're going left, and I'm going to change that. And what I'm going to do in my code is rather than having to load another full set of walking sequences, I'm going to do a trick that you see in a lot of classic arcade games where they take the same geometry and they just flip it to make it go the other direction. So we're going to add some code that if this is going L instead of R, we flip it, or if it's going L instead of R, we flip it back the other way. So we're going to flip that image when we're going one way, and then we only need one walk sequence to walk both left and right. Now we could make it so that it has two separate walk things. So this could be the walk east frames, uh, and then we can make walk west frames and walk northwest frames. We could have different sequences of those. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And we could contextually load up the animation sequence based on what direction we're walking. Uh, and that's pretty easy to do too, but I just want to show you this concept here. So let's do that. The other thing I'm going to do is, um, here, let's leave that off for now. Let's do uh, self dot, let's call this the walk animation update period. So this is a equivalent of our frame time that we talked about in the lecture. And let's leave this on the screen for zero point zero. I don't know, we'll say four, five. Uh, so what's that? That's a, a 20th of a second. We'll leave it on there for 20th of a second. We can play with that uh, later on. That would be the equivalent of three frames that we're leaving it up there. So we could do it the other way uh, as well. We'll put that up there like that. All right, so now we have all those. The next step here is uh, the current frame was started at zero. We don't know if that's a good frame for it to start at or not, uh, but that's where we're starting it. It might be better to start the current frame or the idle frame at something other than that. And that's another thing that's like an idle animation or the idle frame is the one usually where the person looks like they're most with their hands at their side. We'll look at making changes to this in a little bit for that. And let's go ahead and add our uh, render. So this is going to draw the knight. So I'm going to say uh, if self.direction is equal to right. So if they're walking to the right, then what we're going to do is we're going to go and just blit that to the screen as is. So we're going to say display surface dot blit. And what are we going to blit? Well, we got to pick out the current frame. So this is going to be uh, current. Well, let's actually extract the current frame up here. So let's say we'll make a local variable current frame surface equal and self dot walk frames um, and then current so self dot current frame is that what I called that walk current frame all right so we pick out the current frame and if they're going to the right we're just going to blit that so current frame surface. And now we need to put it at a position on the screen, which in our case is just going to be self.x, self.y. So just blitting that to the x, y. Now keep in mind that the x and y on a blit refers to the uh, upper left corner of that, um, that square. So for example, if this is the thing that's blitted, we're talking about the upper left corner. That's the position uh, that's being blitted. And let's have an else if, so elif self.direction is equal to left. Now here, rather than the current frame serve, this is the one we're going the other direction, so we need to flip it. And to flip that, um, there's a transform that we can do. So I'm just going to do a pygame.transform.flip on this surface here. So pygame.transform.flip. 
transform dot flip of that surface. Now the way that flip works is you'll notice it gave me the little tool tip here that it gives me the chance of saying the surface. Well, it's a current frame surface and we want to say where we want to flip it in X and Y. And in our case, we only really want to flip it in X. We only want to change. Uh, so it's going to the left rather than the right or vice versa. So here we're just going to put true. We're not going to flip it upside down. All right, so now we flipped that. If we're going to the left, we've left it alone uh, if we're going to the right. Now, there is one other thing that we might uh, want to do here, and that is if they're not moving, we might want to go to an idle frame, but we'll, we'll leave that off for right now. We'll add something like that uh, later on. There's also something else we probably ought to do as well, and that is uh, we, we're, let's make another method to update the knight's position, so self. And in this case, uh, the update, we're going to use the direction uh, to update their position. So in other words, for update, I'm going to say if self.direction is equal to, in this case, uh, let's do left, or let's keep the way we did it for to the right. Then to move to the right, we're going to say self.x plus equal uh, self.walk speed. That's what I called that. So if they're moving to the right, we're going to add to it. If they're moving to the left, so I'll just copy that. Say else if the direction is to the left, then self.x minus equal walk speed. So that's how far it's moving each, uh, each time. And there's one other thing I'm going to do uh, inside of here as well. And I'm going to, that means I need to update my uh, animation time. And there's something that we're going to need to add up here to allow that to happen. So notice right now, we don't have anything that's keeping track of the last time it was updated. So we're going to capture that. So I'm going to uh, up here say self.animation timer equal, and I'm going to capture the time. So I'm going to use time.time. .time. So that's capturing the time that the animation, the last frame was updated. And then down here, what I'm going to do in my up, oop, I went too far, in my update, is I'm going to say uh, in here that I'm going to compute the elapsed time. And the way to do that is I'm going to say time dot time. So I read the current time off of the clock and I subtract from it myself dot uh, animation timer. I forgot what I called that. Let me scroll up and look. Oh, it's right there. Animation. Yeah. Anim timer. Anim timer. So I did that right. So I'm going to calculate that and now I'm going to say if the elapsed time ever gets to be, uh, in this case, greater than my self dot uh, animation update period, walk animation update period, so if that ever gets to be greater than that, then I need to move to the next frame, so here's self dot uh, in this case, walk frame current plus equal one. So I add one to the frame. And I also need to reset my timer. So I'm going to say self dot nm timer uh, equal time dot time. So I reset that to the new time that was on the clock. And then I also uh, here, let's switch the order of these. I also need to say, well, what if I walk off the end of that? I don't want to walk off the end of that. So I'm going to say if self dot walk frame current, if that ever gets to be greater than the length. Uh, now you could put, I guess, seven there, uh, but I'm going to see if it's greater than the length of that list. 
which is self dot, uh, what was the name of the list? Um, walk frames. Yeah. So if that ever gets to be greater than the number of walk frames, then we set it back to zero. So self dot walk anim frame. Walk, no, walk frame current. Set it back to zero. So in other words, it'll wrap around again as it gets to the end. It'll wrap back around, goes up to the top, wraps back around. And that will keep happening um, over and over again uh, every time through that loop. Okay, so we've got that set up. And now let's go ahead and add our, uh, create our night. So before my loop, I'm going to go ahead and create the night. So I'm going to say night equal, uh, and that was the um, night. And let's put it right in the middle of the screen. Oh, let's do 400. Well, we'll do it slightly down on the screen. So 400, 400. So there's my night. And then in my uh, main loop here, I'm going to do night dot update. And I'm going to get a night dot render. And that takes care of calling the update, which is going to update the uh, position based on what direction they're walking. And it's also going to update the animation timer uh, and change the frame to the next one whenever necessary. And then we're going to render it each time. Now, there is one thing uh, that's probably missing from this that I need to deal with. And that is uh, right now I have it set up so to do that, but I don't have any key presses to actually cause it to move. Uh, so let's add that. So here, if keys by game dot K underscore, and let's use a for walking to the left. And if they're walking to the left, the basic idea here that I'm going to set the night direction night dot uh, direction. I think that's what I called that. Yeah, so night direction, and this is either going to be left or right. So A is to the left. And then we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to use D and go to the right. And we don't have it bounded on the screen. We also, um, there's something else here that we're not doing. And that is, what if they're not moving at all? Uh, this case, they're always either going to be moving to the left or the right. Let's run this and see what happens. And then we'll make some changes to it. And we screwed up walk current frame. I think it was walk frame current. So that's on line 24. Let's go back and look at what we did wrong there. Let's see. Yeah, I have these backwards. Walk, it should be walk frame current, not walk current frame. All right, let's try again. Okay, now he, he walked a little bit and he went off of the edge of the list. So there's something wrong with our code. So let's go back and look at our code again where that's resetting it back to zero. Let's do that. And there you notice he walks and he leaves the screen. And also notice he keeps walking. It's not tied to the keyboard uh, at all. Let's, let's run that one more time and see if the keyboard actually does allow it to go back and forth. Uh, okay, and we had another typo on line 28 where we have DE in there. Oh, right here, display surface. All right, let's try again. All right, so we're walking to the right, we're walking to the left, but notice I can't stop. It's either going one way or the other way. And that does work, and you can see it cycling through it, but I want a way to actually make him stop. And there's also this weird brown box around him too. That's a little bit disturbing. Uh, so we're, we could either make the background match that, 
But we really want to probably mask that out and make it transparent. So we'll talk about how to do that. But you'll notice the walk sequence looks pretty good. All right, so a couple things to fix. One is, if I let off of a key, we want it to stop walking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my code down here in a couple ways. I'm going to say, if they press A, then do this. Else, if they press D, then do that. And I'm going to have an else, which is going to happen if they're not pressing either one. I'm going to say night dot direction and you know what, I'm going to do this uh, a little bit differently. I'm going to say is moving. Not in moving, is moving. Is moving. And the reason I'm doing this separately rather than saying the direction equal to none or something like that is I still want it to be facing the direction I was walking last time. So I'm just going to have it still keep track of left and right. But I'm going to say is moving is true. for each of those. And now up in my night code, I'm going to add that attribute is moving right here. Self dot is moving. And I'm going to set it equal to false to start with. And then in my render, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this, uh, this stuff is probably okay. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but let's look at the update. When we do update, I don't want to, if I'm not walking, I don't want to move this either position. And I also don't want to update any of this. I'm the only time I'm going to update the position or any of that based on left or right is I'm going to say if self dot is moving, if that's true, and we could have just said if self dot is moving, then do this. And we're just going to indent all this underneath it. So the only time we update the frame, the only time we check to see if it's left or right, and move its position on the screen is if we're moving. Let's see what that does. Okay, we start off, we're still. Now there's something I don't like about how this is working and that's that you'll notice it's going through the walk animations. But I would kind of like it to be in the middle position like that when I'm not, uh, when I'm not walking. And right now that's not the case. It's kind of going through the cycle and it just stops wherever I last was on the cycle. which maybe is what you want, but I would like it to be in kind of that central neutral position like that whenever I stop. In other words, I don't want it to be stopped partway through. And for this animation, it's not really so bad, but if you had a running animation, it'd be weird to be all stretched out like this when the character stops. You want it to kind of go back to the idle state or the middle state when it stops. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at those frames and figure out what the middle one is. And I'm gonna set it to that frame whenever they let off the keyboard. So whenever we're, they're not pressing the keyboard, whenever it's not moving, we're going to set it to that uh, middle frame there. We also have to get rid of this brown box around this guy. So we'll, we'll do that also here in a second. But let's first uh, deal with the case of the idle uh, frame. So let's look at those pictures. Let's see, where is that? That's here. Now, which one looks closest to the middle? It's maybe two. Or maybe six. Because there's kind of two. There's only the left foot is in front, there's only the right foot is in front. So it'd be either two or six. Let's just try two. So that would be frame zero, one, two. That would be frame two. So what I'm going to do in my code is in this code, I'm going to say in this update, if moving is true, I do this, and then I'm going to say else, which means if moving is false, then I'm going to go ahead and set my self dot walk frame current equal to two. Walk frame current, not frame. And I'm going to put a little comment here. Now, realistically, um, I would like the idle post to always be at position zero. 
uh, but let's see if this works. So you, you walk as soon as you let off, it kind of goes to that position with a foot in position two. And one of the things that I would like to do uh, that I think would make this better is rather than having it arbitrarily at two, let's just set the idle uh, pose to zero and see what happens. But that might not look how we want. So yeah, so that always has the foot out in front, which looks weird. Like he's always kicking his foot out in front when he stops, which doesn't look right. So one of the things that I would probably do if I were doing this is I would like to rearrange the order of these in here. So the position zero is always the idle one. So to do that, that's really simple. We'll just make two in frame zero position. And then it still cycles through the same sequence, but it starts with two instead of with what they had as zero. And that looks better to me. All right, now let's get rid of that stupid brown box around this. And that's because these were bitmaps. But the nice thing about that is those are kind of color keyed. And so what I'm going to do is uh, and, and that was the if you looked at that, that was where I could created that walking sequence uh, earlier. Uh, let's go and save that. And this is a free tool called paint.net. Uh, and I'll go ahead and save this in my stuff for this class. Okay, so let me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and open one of those walking uh, files. And I want to figure out what color that is on that background. Uh, open with, let's do paint on that. And so the way I'm going to figure that out is I'm going to go and use this eyedropper tool and suck that up and then double click on that and we do more. Okay. So it looks like that the color of that is RGB 111.79.51. So notice I just use the eyedropper tool and you can eyedropper other parts of this too if you want to, but we care about the brown part. And notice it's all the same color. No matter where I use the eyedropper here, I get 111, 79, 51. So let's remember that. So that means back in our code, we're going to color key that out. So how are we going to color key that out? Well, the way I'm going to do it is after I've loaded all of them, I'm going to go through every one of those. So I'm going to say for frame in self dot uh, walk frames. And I'm going to say frame dot set color key. And this is a, a function that's built into uh, Pygame to set the color key, which will set any pixel it sees of that color, it will set to transparent. So in this case, if you remember what that was, it was a 111 dot, uh, what was it, 79 dot 51, I believe. If we, if we get it wrong, what the hell? And I need commas in there. I don't know why I got dots in there. And that should be 111. So that sets the color key for that frame. And that makes all of that in that frame transparent. So we went through every frame and chroma keyed out uh, every. And if you've ever seen green screen views, this is kind of how that does anything that's green or close to that color uh, becomes uh, transparent or replaced, out, replaced with whatever the background image is. So that's when they do green screen work and film. That's the kind of thing they do is they process each frame, take all that color out, make it transparent, and they can lay the other rendered stuff back behind there. All right, let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. And that looks better. Now we have our knight walking on that gray uh, surface. And his idle animation snaps to his legs kind of together. And you can kind of see how that uh, that's working. Now, there is a problem the way that I'm doing this with him walking, just using the flip. And that's you'll notice that his little weapon or whatever this thing is here always stays on the same side of his body. So it's visible. And realistically, when he goes the other way, it would move to the other side of his body. 
But if you download those uh, walking sequences uh, from Reiner's tile sets or you make your own, you can do the art however you want, and you would just have a different set for walking to the left versus walking to the right. And you would just select the frames uh, based on an if statement for which way uh, you're walking for each of those. All right, so that's walking. Uh, one last thing since I downloaded that uh, castle image. Um, actually, let's go ahead and render, uh, look at how we would render that. So let's go back to the code here. And let's, before my main loop here, uh, let's load that up. So let's do background surface equal pi game dot image dot load. And the castle one was castle dot JPEG. I think it was a JPEG. Oh, yeah, there it is. Castle dot JPEG. Oh, castle dot JPEG. All right, so there's the castle. And then down here in my code, rather than doing this display surface dot bill, let's put a uh, comment that out. Let's do display surface dot blit. Oop, caps locks on. Display surface dot blit. And what we're going to blit is going to be the background surface. And the destination position is just going to be zero, zero. And let's run that and see what that looks like. And there's our castle uh, with our knight. And he still has a shadow. Looks like the shadow is going away from him. And so that actually looks OK. Now, that, that's actually another problem with the direction. By flipping it, you'll notice the shadow jumps which side it's on, which is not natural either. Um, so if you use the actual sprite animations that are going in the right direction, that'll look uh, a little better. But it doesn't look bad. And the walk sequence is uh, OK. Yeah, he looks a little robotic the way he moves his body. It's not supernatural. Meaning, not meaning the word supernatural. It's not It's not a natural looking walk sequence. And, and I don't know why there's a cat down there, but that cat is huge compared to that little guy, uh, I think. Uh, let's move him down on the screen a little bit so he's closer to that cat. Let's see, that's where we make the night. Uh, oops, all uh, right. Oop. The scrolling is so sensitive here. All right, here. Let's make this up maybe 400, 500. See where that is. OK, so now he's down there with that cat. And now you can see that cat is giant. OK, so that is the uh, walk sequence. And I will post all of the code and assets for that uh, to the course page. Um, and again, it's not much code, uh, pretty easy to follow. Uh, let's do one more example. And the other example I want to do is uh, going to be uh, explosions. And to do that one, though, I want to do something a little bit different for the explosions. And the thing that I want to do different for the explosions is I want to load all of them from a sprite sheet. So let me, uh, here, let me do file new. And to save a little bit of time, I'm going to do a save as on this, actually. I'm going to say save as, and I'm going to call this explosion, example.py. And I'm going to save it in the directory that has the explosion uh, sprite set in it. Oops, actually, there's already a thing in here. Explosions.py. Explosions.py and the explosions directory. All right, so that looks good. Now, what I'm going to do uh, first off is I'm going to get rid of this night class. We'll get rid of all that. We'll rewrite that. I will leave and let's change this. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of the castle. We'll keep the frame clock. We'll keep that. We'll get rid of the stuff associated with moving the night. Uh, let's fill the surface, but let's just go and fill it with black. 
Ah, we can leave it that dark gray. It should be fine. Let's get rid of the night related stuff. I don't know if that was any faster doing it that way, but now we're back to our uh, basic framework for the program. So running that, we will just get a gray background. And when we hit escape, it'll exit. Okay, so all that worked. So now we need to add the explosion uh, code in here. But the thing about the explosions, let's go back to that directory and find uh, what that sprite sheet for the explosions looks like. And here's what the sprite sheet for the explosions looks like. And you'll notice that it starts out small and circular. It kind of expands. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and then 24 and 25 are both blank. So we've got like 25 frames of explosions here that start out with it small, it gets bigger, and then when it starts to fade out, it turns more orange, and it goes down and dissipates back to nothingness when the explosion is done. So what we're going to do is rather than save this off as 25 different files, we're just going to use this one file, but we're going to clip out just the part we need uh, for each of the frames. And if you think about this, it goes across like row 1, column 1, row 1, column 2, row 1, column 3, all the way up to five, and then the same thing here, or you can say zero, 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 one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, two, zero, two, one, two, three, two, uh, four, uh, two, zero, two, one, two, 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 three, two, four, and so forth, all the way up uh, through all of the rest of them. So that's how we're gonna load those up in there. Now, one of the things that would help us to know how big those are, and we could load up that up in a paint program and measure the thing, or we could look at the resolution of this entire thing and then divide it by one, two, three, four, five, and figure out how many uh, rows and columns there are. Uh, but let's go back to the code, and we are going to uh, start writing the a class for that and then load the thing in. So up here, kind of where we had the night class, I'm going to do a class. Uh, Explosion, object, and here we'll make our constructor. And the explosion probably be, ought to be at some place as well. So uh, x comma y, just like the night was created at some place, explosion needs to be somewhere. And then inside of here, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, self.x equal x, self.y equal y. And here, uh, self dot frame timer equal. Now I'm going to do this a little bit differently. Rather than keeping track of time dot time in here, I'm going to uh, actually set my frame uh, timer to zero, and then I'm going to set a time per frame uh, inside of here. Uh, as well. So I'm going to say set my frame timer equal to zero uh, self dot time per frame. This is really the same thing we did in the other one. Let's do 0 0.04. Uh, we'll do 0 0.5. So 20, uh, a twentieth of a second for each one. And then what I'm going to do here uh, is let's do self dot active equal true. So this is, it's in the act of exploding. And the reason I'm going to do this is we're going to make an explosion list. And when they're done exploding, we're going to take them out of the list. So we can, we're going to be able to have multiple explosions happening at one time. And so what I'm going to do here is say explosion. Uh, now we need to load up the sprite surface. So, and this is where we're going to trim all the sprites out of that one uh, five by five window. And notice I'm making this a local variable. So here, pygame.image.load. And what, what was that called? Let's go back and look at that for a second. Explosion transparent.png.
believe that's right. All right, so we've loaded that surface, but now we want to create our, uh, our frame list. So self dot explosion frames. We'll set that to empty, but now we want to make our loop. So I'm going to say four, let's do row or let's, let's just do I and J. So for I in range five, we'll go zero through four range. Oops, not an N range five. For J in range five. Oh, five. And now what I want to do in here is I'm going to say self dot explosion frames dot append. So I'm going to add to my explosion list. And we're going to use this thing um, called subsurface. And what subsurface allows you to do is to trim a surface out of an existing surface and make a new surface from that. So it's kind of like copying out just a portion of that. So here I'm going to say explosion. Uh, here, let me be consistent with my naming. I'm not use these underscores here. So we're going to do explosion sprite surface dot uh, subsurface. So we're going to cut a subsurface out of that. And what we're going to use is we're going to use I and J to know where to get that subsurface from. And I happen to know that in the original image, if you were to measure those uh, positions of those in this, not that image, the original, uh, let me close that and reopen that original image. Okay, let's actually open that with. Oh, you open that with paint.net. Again, paint.net's free. You can download it. But I happen to know that if I were to highlight one of those areas here, like how big is this area here? That is a 64 by 64 pixel block uh, for how big that is. So each of these is 64 by 64. So that means what we're going to do over in our code when I trim out the subsurface, I'm going to say J times 64. So that's my X comma I times 64. So that's my position. And then it's going to be 64 wide and 64 tall. All right. So that sets up uh, trimming all of the frames out of my one sprite sheet. So this is my explosion sprite sheet surface. And here I've trimmed each of those out one at a time out of that. Now, the last thing we need to do here is set the current frame. So self dot current frame. And let's say explosion. So we know that that's what we're talking about. Current frame. We'll set that equal to zero. Okay, so the current frame uh, is set to zero. And then the last frame is just the length of how many uh, there are minus one. Okay, so there's the explosion. Let's do render. So the render method, I'm going to say if self dot current frame is greater than or equal to zero, which it should be because we started at zero. Then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do display surface dot blip of the current frame. So self dot uh, explosion frames subscript self dot current frame. And my position is going to be self.x, self.y. Okay, 
Now, the other thing that I want to do here is I'm going to say if self.currentFrame uh, explosion current frame. If that is less than the length of self dot explosion frames, that, that's an index, so minus one, I believe. All right, so if that's true, then that means we haven't gotten to the last frame yet. So that means we want to uh, increment our time. So self dot frame here. And I wasn't consistent on how I named these either. Timer time per frame. All right, so self.frame uh, timer plus equal. And how do we know how long the how long the main loop is running? I'm going to go and put a DT in here. And in my code, I'm going to say uh, DT equal 1 over 60, or 1 over frames per Having trouble typing. Second. Sixty. One over that is my DT. And let's fix our update down here instead of putting sixty. Let's put frames per second. All right, so now we've made it a little more uh, programmatic. But what I'm going to do in here is every time we go through, I'm going to add my DT to my frame timer. And then what I'm going to do uh, with that frame timer is I'm going to say if I ever get where my frame timer, so if self dot frame timer ever gets to be greater than my self dot time per frame. So in other words, if the time, the amount of time I've been on this frame ever exceeds my time that I set per frame, then I'm going to go to the next frame. So self dot uh, explosion current frame plus equal one. So we go to the next frame and then we reset our frame timer. Self dot frame timer goes back to zero. Now, if I'm not, if I've reached the end, I don't want to do that. So here I'm going to put an else. I'm going to say self.active now becomes false once we've reached the end of the life of that explosion. And what we probably also ought to do is only render this if it's active. So let's just skip all of, over all of this if it's uh Actually, I don't know why I have this if the current frame is greater than or equal to zero. We probably don't need that, especially if we're going to check what's active. So what I'm going to do is we're going to blit this every time unless it's active. So here I'm going to say if self.active is true, then we're going to do all of this inside of that. Otherwise, we do absolutely nothing. There's nothing to render if it's no longer active, so we'll just skip over all that. Okay, so now we have that done. So the last uh, thing we need to do is I said I wanted to make an explosion list. In other words, I want to have, be able to have more than one explosion going off at one time. So to do that, I'm just going to make a really simple class for that. I'm going to say class. So this is similar to what we do with particle effects. So we'll call it an explosion list. 
And what we're going to do inside of this explosion list class, it's going to be super simple. I'm going to say def. I don't even need to pass anything to that constructor. Self dot. And that explosion list starts out empty. And that's really all I need in that. So now let's do def. Let's add an explosion. And let's give this uh, an X and a Y, a position where the explosion is going to happen. And all I'm going to do inside of here is essentially add it to the list. So here I'm going to say self dot self dot explosion list dot append. What am I going to append to that explosion? And that explosion that I'm going to uh, add is going to be an x comma y. Which remember, those are the two things we pass into an explosion up here, just an x and a y. So we just pass those along like that. So that just appends one to the list. If we want to, we could add a little randomness so they are a little bit offset from each other when we click the button. We'll do that for now. We'll mess around with it later. So that's all we need for that. And now we just need our render. So def render. So this is just going to go through my explosion list. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say um, for explosion in explosion list self dot explosion list. Oops. So we're going to go through every uh, explosion in the explosion list, and we're just going to render it. So. Now, there's one other thing we had to do. We had to get rid of ones that have expired or ones that are no longer active. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we've done this before with bullets, so I'm going to make another list here and say explosions to remove list. We'll start that as empty. And after we've rendered one of these, we'll say, hey, if that explosion dot active is false, so it's no longer active anymore, then we're going to add it to this list. Okay, so we add it to that list. And then what I'm going to do is after I'm done with this, I'm going to say for each one in the ones that need to be removed, self dot explosion list dot remove. And the one I want to remove is one of those ones that is done now. Okay, so that should handle all that we need to do that. Now let's just make our main uh, program work. Uh, so in my main program, uh, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the mouse, uh, a mouse click uh, down here. And I'm going to do that uh, because we haven't done a lot of examples using events to get stuff. I'm going to do it a, a slightly different way. So what I'm going to do is rather than using this event.pump like we have been and escape like that, I'm going to do this uh, using the event system of doing this. So here I'm going to say for event in pygame.event.get. So I get uh, that gives me a list of all the events, and that's four loops. I need to put a call in there. And then inside of there, I'm going to check for the different event types. So I'm going to say if event.type is equal to pygame dot key down. So if it's a key down event, then I want to check what key it is. So inside of that, I'm going to say if event dot key is equal to pygame dot K underscore 
escape. So notice what we're doing here. We're saying, all right, get go through all of the events that are currently pending. If the event that we got was a key down event, and then check what key it is. If the key was the escape key, then here uh, we could put break here, but break here will break out of this for loop, and we want to get out of the whole loop. So we're going to need to change this from true here. We'll say running, and I'm going to, so I'm going to make this global variable running up here. I'm going to say running equal true. And here I'm going to say if they did press the escape key, then we're going to say running equal false. Now, if I want to check other keys, uh, I could do that uh, down here. And I'm going to show you how to uh, make your game switch between full screen and window mode. And it turns out that, that that's pretty easy to do. So I'm going to add one other key. So if event.key equal pygame.k underscore. Let's make it F for full screen. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if full screen If we're in full screen mode already, then we're going to do full screen equal false, else full screen equal true. And so we're going to define full screen as false to start with here. But I also want to now change the, the screen. And the cool thing about this is the display surface. Since it's just a surface, we can change it out. So if full, if we are full screen, we change it to false. And then display surface here is going to be the same way um, it was set up before. In other words, exactly like what we have up here. So we're just going to paste that in right here. But if full screen was not set, we set it to true, and now we're going to change that to this. And to do that, we're going to use this, uh, one of the flags for this pygame dot full screen. So that should change it. And notice we've replaced the display surface, so now everything's going to happen uh, in full screen. And it'll be a little bit clunky resolution with 800 by 600. We could change that resolution and make it like uh, match the screen, have like 1600 by 1050 or uh, whatever size display you have. We'll leave it like this for now. Okay, so now the last thing we need to do here is I want to check a different event type. So I'm going to say else if the event dot type is equal to pygame dot instead of key down, let's do mouse button. So if they press, uh, and actually I need to differentiate your mouse button down and up. So we're going to do it on when they click down. So mouse button down. So if they press the mouse button down, then what we're going to do is we're going to get the position. So mouse X, mouse Y equal position, And now we're going to append an explosion. Explosion list.append, and we don't have an explosion list object made yet. We're going to make that in a second. So let's go and make this explosion list variable here. And that before the loop here. And I'll just put it there, explosion list equal and we're going to use our class. That's going to be an instance of an explosion list. Like that. All right, now I did a lot there. Uh, I suppose we need to render that. So let's do explosion list. And notice there is no update for that because it updates it all automatically. Um, so we just do explosion list.render. And let's see what happens. 
and explosion list has okay so we screwed up in that code i knew there would be some problem and that's where we clicked and made this explosion list dot that doesn't need to be we need to that needs to be add explosion not append add underscore explosion And there we have explosions. Okay, now there is one other thing that I want to show you quickly um, that can be uh, useful for this. And that is that when we're doing uh, our render here with this uh, explosion. You'll notice that if I layer more than one explosion over the top of uh, itself, you'll notice that the black kind of smoke area around the outside kind of layers on top of itself. And to illustrate that further, uh, let me do something here in my code. Let me put a little bit of randomness around where I clicked. So when I click and I do an add explosion to X, Y, let me do uh, X plus equal random rand int. Let's do minus 10, 10. Let's do Y plus equal minus 10, comma 10. So this is giving a little bit of variance. If I click a bunch of times rather than putting them all in exactly the same spot, it'll be shifted around. I need to import random. Let's click and see what happens. But you'll notice when those click, see that harsh edge around there? Uh, and also, if there was some other geometry uh, behind the scenes, this would very starkly sit over the top of it and block it out. So one of the things that, that you can do um, that can make this better, here, I have an idea. Let's, uh, let's make it so when we click one time, it adds like 10 of those clusters on top of each other. Let's add this a little bit more to the spread. Let's make this 20, 20. 20, 20. Let's make a for loop around this and do a four I in range. Let's do 10. There, so now when I click, I get a cluster of explosions. Oops, I, that was weird. They're not. Oh, the plus equal is the problem. Uh, okay, I don't want to do that. Let me change that. Hold on one second here. The plus equals making them kind of wander in a direction. And we don't want that. We want it to be. Offset X. Offset Y. X plus offset X. Y plus offset y. All right, that'll be better. So now they won't wander around. Okay, so there's a cluster of explosions, but notice that harsh edge on there. And if we had background geometry uh, associated with that, maybe 10 is too many. Or maybe our spread isn't big enough, I don't know. Maybe 30. Let's lower this down to maybe five. That might be too much now, we'll see. We can play with that, but that's just giving us this kind of different effect that is a little bit of variance every time there's an explosion, so they don't always look the same. But that harsh edge kind of bothers me. And one of the tricks that uh, I think is really useful is if we just change the way that the render uh, happens up here for this, uh, which is happening right here on this line, that there's actually with Blit, there's some special flags you can pass to that. And the way that those special flags work is you just say special flags equal flags equal and you can specify how you want it to blend the thing that's being blitted do you want it to be overlaid do you want it to difference mode and if you've ever played around with photoshop and done the layer mode things with is it a multiply is it the, but one of the ones that works well for things that are kind of sort of transparent that lay over the top of other things is blend so this needs to be pygame.blend add 
And what blend add does is it makes it so it kind of add, adds the pixel values together. And now when we have that black, that black isn't going to be so harsh around the edges. So you notice that looks much more uh, fluid because a black pixel of zero, rather than just pasting the black pixel there, it's paste adding a value of zero, adding it to what's already there. So now you notice we get this thing that looks more like a, a organic explosions happening in these little clusters. And you notice as it layers the white on top of it, we'll get like kind of a big white thing. And this this technique for using that blend add is really useful for a particle effect as well. And that it can even be useful for just doing one at a time. So let's go back and just change that. Uh, take that foil leaf back down to. Let's see, that's down here. We were layering five. Let's just do one now. So even with one at a time, notice how that has a softer edge to it without that really dark black stuff. And the cool thing about that is that'll even layer nicely over other. Um, Color. So right now we have that gray background. Well, if I made this like something a little bit brighter, I think we'll make that a hundred. That's kind of got that red background. Notice those still layer over that nicely. Or even a white background. Let's make it white. Okay, now we have a little bit of a problem. You'll notice that it's not showing up over the white background because it's adding to it. So it's adding the pixels to whatever's there. If we did a blend, uh, a different kind of blend mode, we'd get something a little bit nicer. But that's one of the uh, problems with that. But it works great over anything darker. It'll even work over uh, other uh, image kinds of backgrounds, but it, it's adding, it's layering the things up. But for explosions, that tends to work pretty well. As long as you're not over something that's already white. And let's go back to our thing up here and let's make this five again and I think that looks pretty good explosion looks a little bit organic it's like a cluster of things all around the same area but they look different every time there's an explosion even though it's composed of the same kind of sequence animation And if we want that to explosion to happen more quickly and take less time to explode and fade out, notice we have total control over all that. If we want so to do that, we just change up here in our explosion time per frame. Let's make this smaller. Now you'll notice explosions happen more slowly. I wanted to, I could make it happen. More slowly. So that make, it takes longer to go through the sequence and fade out. It looks a little chunky when we do that. So we're keeping the thing on the screen for longer. And I was pretty happy with where it was at the beginning, so let's go back to that. And give me just a second to answer this call, and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so looking at that, we now have these explosions uh, happening. And I think to finish this off, I'm going to make that a black background and then we'll be done with this. So there we go. Nice bright explosions over a black background. And rather than having it where you click, you would essentially assign those. And one thing to keep in mind is that they're around the upper left corner of where that is. You might want to make it more around the center of the explosion. But notice you could use this sort of as a particle effect too. If you wanted to have something that had a fire effect that kept burning, you just keep creating those and it will cycle through the... You can make like a, a row of lava out of these things. You could do all kinds of stuff with something like this. Um, but the idea is that frame animation just cycles through each of the frames. When it gets this one, when it gets to the end, it's done. The walking one, when it gets to the end, it goes back to the beginning. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. Uh, finish up a few final things. This has been a longer lecture than I intended today. I expended intend this to be around a little over an hour. We're at an hour and a half. Uh, it took me longer to code that stuff up than I thought with the two examples. Um, but let's just quickly switch back to the presentation and finish things up. We did those two examples. Uh, we're all done with that. We did the walking, we did the exploding. Now, characters can store separate animation frame sequences for different situations. Uh, and what that means is things like waiting, like the idle animation where they're sitting there, they look bored, they're kind of like just shifting from side to side. You could have an animation for that. Walking versus running, a lot of times those look different. Fighting with different weapons, uh, melee attack, shooting an arrow, you might have different animations for that. Uh, jumping might have an animation. Climbing might have an animation. Crawling, uh, death animation where they crumple to the ground. And there might be different versions of each of these depending on what direction um, that is happening in. So you could have a whole animation system that decides what to render based on what way you're going and what action you're taking. And that's just a set of if-elses, uh, maybe nested if-elses that chooses which animation sequence to use. But the process, the, the concept is the same. That could be true for anything, casting a spell, uh, drinking water. The difficult thing there is you have to make all of the assets for that or find some that already exist. Um, some tools that can help you with generating your own animation sequences. Uh, uh, and there are probably tons of other ones as well. But there's this Piscal thing, uh, which is a free online, has a free online interface or an app you can download that, uh, that does that. Um, that one is uh, pretty easy to use. There's this uh, Aceprite thing. Aceprite. Um, that's on aceprite.org. There's a trial version of that. And if you run it, really find it useful, want to buy it, it's only like $20. So it might be a good investment rather than fighting with uh, Photoshop or something like that. Uh, and then there's this other, other free online one uh, called Bob Sprite uh, that if you have, that uses HTML4. So if you have a, a newer browser uh, like Chrome that supports HTML4, you can run that Bob Sprite thing in there. And that works a lot like this Piscal uh, app thing up here. So feel free to play around with those and use them. But they essentially allow you to edit the thing and then watch a preview of the animation sequence. And then when you have it how you want, you can export it either as an animated GIF or you can export it as all of the individual frames or in some of them they allow you to export a sprite sheet. Um, and you can specify the size and there's drawing tools and you can flip between the frames and look at how it looks from one frame to the next. So they're actually pretty useful. Uh, but you could also do it the old-fashioned way, kind of like I did with my running sequence. We just draw the things, and then you could make a little program yourself that flips them. And uh, also in the past, one of the things that I've done when I've worked on games is I made my own sprite editor. Uh, it basically isn't that complicated. that You uh, just have to flip through frames like we were doing in our software, and you could test out the, edit the pictures, test them out. The problem with that, though, is you'd have to spend a lot of effort making the kind of graphics editing tools. Uh, if you were in my class last semester, we made a paint program. It's kind of like that combined with the ability to flip between frames. It's not overly complicated, but it's also time you're spending not working on it and other things exist that do that already. 
but you can get by with MS Paint or Paint.net or GIMP or Photoshop or any of your favorite drawing tool uh, and edit the things and look at them. I would just suggest these because they make some of that easier. And that's it for today. Uh, hopefully everybody's making progress on your games. If you get stuck or need help, let me know. Other than that, that's it for today, and I'll see everybody next time. Again, if you're having problems, let me know. Bye.